Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green, the manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Womblies, who are in the FA Cup. The quarterfinals against Newcastle United, Premier League opposition for our lowly League Two squad. We got the best of the best, but the boys are a little tired, so we're going to have to hope that everything goes well. Today's uh, topic comes from Project for Awesome donor Devin, uh, who wants to know about significant milestones in my life, how they influenced uh, my life, and, and which were the most influential. So I talked in the past about how I think that most, um, most, of, most events are really processes. Most things that we associate with like single moments, like wonderful or terrible moments, are really processes. But um, you know, there are some, uh, there are some moments, of course, in human life that are really uh, wonderful and or terrible. Uh, like when you, you know, find out that a friend has died or you, you know, you always sort of know where you were when 9-11 happened or, or whatever it is. Um, you know, these, these big moments in, in your life. Um, so I'm going to talk about good ones because I want to put the AFC Wimbledon Wimbly Wombly's in a good mood. Uh, because I need us to be positive here, even though we're up against a club that on paper is a lot better than we are. These games aren't played on paper. Um, they're played inside of an Xbox. And so it's important that the boys know that I believe in them, even though the world has said they can't win. Here comes John Green to John Green! Oh, it doesn't work. Shoot! Shoot! What part of shoot didn't you understand, Goal Porter? What's your name? Goals! So, um... Yeah, I mean, one of the one of the things that Devin suggested was like the moment I found out that my first book was getting published, and that really was kind of kind of an event. Like it was a moment. I got a call. It's funny actually because I got a call first from Eileen Cooper, my mentor, um, and she said, uh, "You're going to get an offer from from Dutton," uh, and uh, and she was like, "But now you have to pretend to be surprised." <laughs> So then when I got the actual call, I had to pretend to be surprised. But I still sort of was surprised because, like, on some level, I still didn't believe that it was going to happen. Um, so, yeah, that was, pretty, that was a pretty wonderful moment. Uh, and, I, I mean, I, I was at work, and then that night I went out with my girlfriend at the time, um, and we went, to, uh, we went to a sushi dinner, and I remember we spent my, – my advance for that first book was $8,000. So I remember that we spent uh, 1%. We spent $80 on that meal, and I remember thinking, like, Oh my God, like that's 1% of my advance. Like I can only do that, you know, 99 more times and then I'll be out of money again. Um, but it was, that was a great dinner. And like just, it had been such a, so many years of working with Eileen on, on Looking for Alaska. And um, the fact that it was going to become a book was very exciting to me. But then of course, like, then of course, like the real work happens uh, where you have to actually make it into a book. Oh, it's just not the right cross for Bob John Green. He was coming into the far post. Um, and that, uh, you know, that takes a, lo a long, long time. Um, so I guess, like, the moment when, like, Alaska really became a book to me uh, when I first saw the galleys, that was the moment when I, I did really think, like, oh, this is, this is real. Speaking of real, oh, off the post! Off the post! Oh, we can't hit the post with Newcastle. We're up against the Premier League. Get the ball in the net! Get the ball in the... Oh! Oh, wow, that was an intense couple minutes there. We've really got to stay focused. Um, I mean, that was probably the biggest, like, professionally transformative moment in my life. But the memory I have of, uh, was, was, like, the moment that I saw, you know, I got the box full of Looking for Alaska Galleys, and I knew that it was going to be a really real book. But the moment that I remember is not that moment. Um, the moment that I remember is the moment that, like, kind of like made possible the rest of my career is hold on hold on no no like so much so much that is good and beautiful in the world oh it all falls apart in the face of newcastle um nothing person personal new castilians if indeed that is a real place um so I, uh, my first novel, Looking for Alaska, won the Prince Award in January. I, I found out that it won in January of 2006, and that was, uh, that was the best, well, I guess one of the two best moments of my, of my life. Um, and the, putting aside, like, you know, your wedding and your, your kids being born and everything, like, in terms of, like, purely joyful surprises, it was one of the, one of the two or three best um, because while I had hoped that Looking for Alaska would be considered for the Prince Award, and while certainly, I, you know, I knew that it had gotten good reviews, you know, to me, 
the Prince Award was the biggest thing that could happen to a book. Uh, it was cooler to win the Prince Award than it would be to have a movie version of your book. Um, and uh, I still, I mean, I, to be honest, I still sort of feel that way. Like, I think the Prince Award is, it's just so hugely influential in our world of young adult fiction. And, like, it's its th the best, most informed readers, the broadest readers in our um in our world, uh, the groups of young adult librarians come together to decide what's going to win the Prince Award, and it's just a really big deal. And um, and I happened to be on the street in New York City on my way to uh, register for wine glasses with Sarah and my parents. Uh, we just happened, we'd just come from this outsider art show at um, at uh, a museum that I, uh, I don't know, I don't even know if it exists anymore, the American Folk Art Museum. Um, it was a really good show, though. And uh, I was, you know, just having a really nice day with my parents. And then I got this call that I'd won the Prince Award. Let's get it! Oh, the devastation is palatable. I mean, palpable. It's also palatable. We can take it. Um, oh, that's frustrating. So, um, yeah, so we, uh, I got this call on my little, like, you know, Flip phone. Oh, God. Panic, 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 panic. Lizzie Bennett. I don't know if that was Lizzie Bennett or Frampton Comes Alive, but that was fantastic defending. Fantastic defending. All right. Get in there. Do not let them get on this ball. Do not let them get on that ball. Good job. Run. Run. Run, John Green. Run. Pass it to your husband. You were not offsides. He was not offsides. Oh, stolen at the last second. Oh, I got nervous. I've had like 62 breakaways in this game. I don't know what my problem is. Um, yeah, so that that moment of like getting the call and, and Michael Cart, the, the head of the Prince Committee, and one of the like, you know, most, uh, like one of the best literary critics in the world of young adult fiction saying like, you've won the Prince Award. I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Um, yeah, and I mean, I was just like crying and my parents were crying and it's so crazy that my parents happened to be there that day and like, yeah. So that was, I mean, in terms of that and then the other one, um, which is much less, uh, is a story that makes me look much less good, is uh, when the movie rights to Looking for Alaska sold because they sold for a lot of money at a time when we really needed money. Sarah and I were uh, starting to think about moving to New York so that she could go to graduate school. And, um, but I don't know if you know this, but New York is very, very expensive. And, you know, we just, so like we were at a time in our lives where we really needed money and like out of nowhere, suddenly the Looking for Alaska movie rights were, you know, whereas like the day before we'd hoped that maybe they would sell for, you know, a few thousand dollars suddenly there was an auction for them and they were bidding a bidding war and like it was just it was just nuts and um you know when i got the final call from paramount saying that the uh that they'd bought the rights and that this you know this was going to be the deal and you know it wasn't it, it, it wasn't you know like life changing money but at the time it really was because it meant that we could go to new york and like all of this stuff that was going to be impossible was going to be possible suddenly and like that was a pretty amazing amazing day i gotta say oh but are we gonna have an amazing day against newcastle or are we going to continue to struggle on in disappointment only 10 minutes left um there are a few others that i wanted to say uh the moment one the, the one of the best moments of my whole life uh, is when I woke up one morning in July of 2007 and I looked at the front page of YouTube as I did every day to see what featured video I should watch that day and it was my freaking brother. Um, and suddenly, instead of having 200 YouTube subscribers, we had 6,000 and then, uh, you know, like, my new job became possible. Uh, and that's the only reason that I'm here with you right now, probably, um, is because... Uh, is because YouTube featured that that Deathly Osseo Deathly Hallows video in in uh, in 2007, and you know Nerdfighteria went from being a couple hundred people to being this like really interesting community. Because oh no, anything but this! Oh, what a tackle! What a tackle! Heroic! I mean, this is that was true heroism at its finest. Come on, that's just is Yabamba tired or something? What what's the deal with what just happened? That should never have occurred. Oh, he's very tired. Oh, our whole midfield is just exhausted. Okay. 
Let's try our best. Let's let's still try to win this game. Let's not give up. I'm going to put St. Louis out on the left, even though he usually plays on the right because he's all I got. And then Hell's Pels is coming in. All right, that's it. We switched everything up. We got a whole new midfield. Come on, new midfield. Oh, no, we need... What about our substitutions? That's rude, Newcastle. Typical Newcastle. I don't know anything about this club. They seem nice. Um... Oh, we tried, tried to try. Oh, it's coming down to the last minute here. We're not even going to get our substitutions in. All right. Oh, poor Yabamba. He's just exhausted. Whoa, Yabamba. That was an unnecessary foul. I know you. What? 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 Are you kidding me? Come on. I mean, it was a little rough, but uh, yeah. that's, to me, that's a yellow. To me, it's a yellow. What, am I, do I still not get to make my substitutions? Well, at this point, I guess we're just hoping for a draw since we're playing with 10 men against Premier League opposition. We've really struggled for goals lately, you got to say. The AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Wombleys. Come on. Find a way. Just find a way. Oh, that's frustrating. And the game hath ended. Well, I'll tell you more about Milestones when we play Newcastle again in like a week. Because we didn't win yet, but we will win. Fear not, intrepid supporters. Best wishes.